Please note that this video has spoilers for the subject. Put off by how long this video is, don't worry, I tend to jam-pack my videos with as much content, as many details as I possibly can, and I try to talk pretty fast, so while the video is a bit on the long side, I don't repeat myself, and I get into a lot of details about the subject that, you know, pretty much anything that I feel I can comment on and that I think you might find interesting. Paranormal Activity, The Marked Ones, Movie Thoughts. I am going to start with the whole... Yeah, the... the the ending to kind of <laughs> okay to get to get the obvious out of the way they 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 now have time travel in in this franchise I I honestly think they're trolling us at this point because that just unnecessarily confuses the crap out of the concept and any semblance of of limits and Limit, limits to the powers of the Coven and and the credibility of the franchise. I, I know, you know, obviously fiction, supernatural, horror kind of thing. Still though, up to this point, up to that point even in this film, we still, I mean, when they first mentioned the film, I, I was just like, okay, you said it, you can't unsay it, it ended up in the final cut of the movie, let's just, here's hoping that it does not reappear. You know, make it, make it like those two little creepy girls in this film, make it have no point whatsoever and just be thrown in there for something to throw the audience off. But no, he finds the door and literally see, you know, I'm sitting there thinking, oh, that's, that's the door. I heard, you know, a couple of teenage girls behind me, one was like, what's that? And the other one indeed said what well, we were all thinking, that's the time-traveling door. He opens it and disappears in through it, and there's Katie, and I'm pretty sure what we then see is indeed just Mika being killed by Katie, so, you know, yeah, once she... Once the film ends there, then she's going up there to, you know, throw him at the camera and then eat the camera. Maybe it's a bit. Maybe it's like that that the coven was... Maybe it's an... it's a... it's... you know, a, a hazing kind of thing. Maybe it's like you gotta throw your first kill a good couple of yards eat a piece of electronic equipment. I guess that's why she turned off the camera used to record this film. She didn't want to fill up on, you know, cameras before she went up. And, I, I mean, we saw Mika's camera. It was pretty big, so, yeah, you know, you're gonna go tangled with that monster. You're gonna want to do it on an empty stomach, so you don't have too much of it. You know, otherwise, you're just gonna to quit halfway through, that's gonna look bad. Now, the... And, and yeah, so, just to... I'm sure someone's gonna come by and say, oh, that, that wasn't time travel. Okay, best case scenario, it's time travel. It could be that they're going, you know, that the portal leads into an alternate dimension where, you know, the... The, yeah, Mika and, and Katie, that whole thing happened in 2012 instead of it taking Hector and Jesse back to 2007. Y yeah, there's no way that it comes out and is like, you know, no, it's, don't worry, it, it makes sense like this. But I guess the marked ones, the titular marked ones, of which in this film we really only see Jesse and the what was that other guy's name? Oscar. Jesse and Oscar. And you know, obviously that woman who, you know, cried for help, the the woman who made sure to wait 
until they were right there, even though they weren't exactly being entirely quiet. She waited until she could jump scare them before she asked for help. You know, and it's not like she was trying to be quiet either. She, you know, just, yeah, anyway. The Marked Ones are the Coven's army, as we're told in this. Which I guess means that shark-faced women are not going to make up the entire invading force that the, the Coven are trying to assemble. Now, the, I, I did quite like that this one did not, in fact, have any shark face. I thought they were going to do it when he, you know, did the, the you know, grab, shoulder grab of, of Katie, you know. Figure that or some neck snapping, because it's kind of, you know, at, at, at this point I figure she, Katie Featherston does not get out of bed unless there's at least two snap necks in her contract. Now, th yeah, I mean, the closest we got was the, the, you know, the, the sneak peek at Jesse's demon face, and then at the end of the film we see the actual demon face. Maybe it's just me, maybe it's, maybe it's the fact that the, the, it's fresh in my mind and it hasn't been done you know, in, in what, four, three, four, four movies by now, like the shark face, but I prefer the, the demon face, that, that's what I'm going to call it, of, of Jesse in this film. It was much, much more uh, terrifying than, uh, yeah. Now, the, I guess... The, we're, we're told that it says that the, the time door can only lead to an ungodly place. Now, that must mean that Mika was indeed quite right, that Katie is a bit of a freak. Now, I suppose that more or less I the the yes to to finish off the 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 ending once they were in the the house I gotta talk about the shotgun just just Arturo with the with the shotgun he takes down like two of the of the witches who are like and they're like running at him. You know, that was pretty badass. I'm not sure if we were supposed to be cheering and laughing, but we were. Pack theater, it got a response. But then, you know, I guess he got caught by one of them. We don't really see him after that point. Then, yeah. I don't know, I guess someone watched the other movies and was like, okay, I love what you're doing. With, with sending in this, you know, tons of, of coven witches persons, can we throw a shotgun in there? I just want to see what they can handle. I just want to see if someone could take them down if they brought a shotgun. You know, this is, this is the response to the people who are like, you know, oh, come on. All you got to do is bring, you know, small arms in there. You can take out this coven. And, you know, throwing in this gangbanger, two of them, in fact, if they, they even do the, I mean, he grabs the, the, the HK, MP5K, I think it was, you know, s smacks in the, the, the clip, I, you know, just the whole, they, they weren't kidding around with this one. They, they just really want to say, okay, you want people who can use guns up against these witches, you got it. Now, yes, once they get into the house and, you know, Hector's all like, oh, Mar Marisol, Marisol, where did you go? And, you know, she comes crashing through the ceiling. He did ask for, you know, he wanted to know where she was. There you go. 
you know, the, the, you can say what you will about this, this coven, they are rather polite. If you ask something, they will respond. You just might not like the response. And then he, you know, he, he goes like, okay, so the, this door doesn't work. This other door doesn't work. And he goes like this other, okay, that doesn't work either. Dude hides in the closet. I'm pretty sure, yeah, they're trolling us at this point, I, I swear. And, and several people in the theater remarked about that closet, what an idiot, you know, and he hides. And I think it's supposed to be intense that he's grabbing the, you know, holding, holding the knob tightly. You know, I get that there's no lock, certainly not on the inside. Oh man, it would have been awesome if there was one on the outside. And then he like tries turning the knob and coming out, and then somebody locked it from the outside. That that would be funny. Anyway, yeah, there's no lock in there, so he's trying to make sure they they don't come in there. To me, it's just like you know they like he's he's acting like he's not actually there, but they can't quite open the thing, so it's pretty obvious he's there. I th yeah, the the possessed game of Simon, I think, I think Simon is the name of that game with the, you know, the, the four colors, you gotta repeat them in the right order, you know, and it's like a lie detector for the demon, basically, yeah, it's the, the demon thing communicates through, you know, they can ask questions and it will mostly answer, you know, if, if asked, are you good, it will abstain from answering, you know, I, I, maybe it just wants a, a more specific definition, you know, are you good as in are you a good person versus are you good at sports, are you, you know, which, which moral definition should we, we use to, to, to determine what is, what is a good person and, and what is a bad, evil spirit? Yeah, that was, that was interesting. I'd, I'd place it closer to the, 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 the Light Bright and, and Teddy Ruxpin than the the, the Ouija board, though, I, frankly, yeah, <laughs> trolling, I swear, they, they just, they're, they're, I mean, that's almost like trying to throw something really silly in there, you know, and, and see if the movie's still scary afterwards. Now, the... when they're like, you know, when, when the car breaks down, because it's a horror movie and the car has to break down at a moment that they need it, it, and, and Jesse like slowly walks closer, and then he's suddenly at the side, you know, I do like that the movie kind of holds on that for longer than the trailer shows it as, you know, the trailer just cuts from him walking closer to him you know, right there at the side. <laughs> Once he, you know, breaks in the, you know, I really do like that, you know, she grabs the bat and <laughs> that's, that's, yeah, I, <laughs> you never know when you might need a steel bar. Yeah, the, the, the Danes in the audience might have, might have understood that. Yeah, so, you know, they put him in, in the back seat, and then they drive, and, what, 30 seconds later, car crash, and the coven takes Jesse back. So that entire sequence got us absolutely nowhere. It just kind of, you know, all it did was ensure that the ride wasn't entirely uneventful. But, yeah, I, I also do kind of like the whole... 
Okay, let's, let's see if we can follow their logic here. Either, either they send Jesse out to stop the car and deal with his friends, at which point you might as well, you know, why not just stop the car and, you know, let that be it. Or Jesse, like, escaped from them and then starts messing around with his friends. Don't know why. If, you know, if it's not the Coven's orders, and once he's knocked out, they instantly find him. I'm guessing they've got him low-jacked. And, yeah, the, and, and you gotta admire their willingness to keep up with the times. I mean, spellcasting, trying to kill the mother so that the firstborn male becomes, you know, a, a demonic henchman for a coven, that's all well and good. Sometimes you just need a good, fast car to slam right into another one. That's all. I'm, I'm impressed that they didn't, like, <laughs> completely destroy... I mean, they're, they're basically fine afterwards. You don't even see them, like, limping or anything. I mean, sure, Jesse's fine. He's still got the, the you know, supernatural bodyguard carrying him to, to you know... What is that song? Whitney Houston? Yeah. I want to say Whitney Houston. And... <laughs> yeah, that, that whole thing just didn't didn't get us anywhere, and, yeah. You gotta love that when Jesse first attacks Hector in, in the house, he, you know, I mean, he could, he could go demon face, but he's building up to it. He throws a blanket through the air, and then suddenly he's standing there. You know, so that's, that's, he, Guy knows how to make an entrance. Besides, he did already show off that he can Dr. Manhattan his way into a living room. You know, so that's... That was a badass effect. I'm, I'm sorry, but right from the start of the, the perspective kind of warping and thing, that was badass. And then he's just there. Yeah, yeah, that was... That was pretty badass. So, so the grandmother goes to, to the healer guy and, you know, he's got all these pictures of, of skeletons on his wall. Not one of them with a sticker for asking about Grim Fandango, by the way, gets some eggs. That's... maybe he sells dairy as well. Eggs are healthy. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm sure they're godly as well, and, you know, present three raw eggs in, in this little bowl thing. Well, I guess I'm only guessing that they're raw. I suppose they could be hard-boiled, but presuming they're raw, present them in a bowl, you know, asking Jesse to come over. He seems a little hesitant. I'm thinking he doesn't really feel like, you know, going through a training montage, facing the champ, screaming for, you know, his girlfriend at the end of the movie. It just, yeah, and you gotta love how he's just he's sitting there like, I, oh, come on, Grandma, don't do this, you know, and suddenly grabs, you know, her, her hand, you know, crushes the egg. Suddenly there's blood there. I know that's supposed to be scary, but me, I'm just sitting there, Whose blood is that? Did that hurt him? Did that hurt her? Is that the blood of the of of like the the chicken that was to be in the egg, but that is now dead? What ex what exactly are we are we going for here? Now, I suppose that.
I've reviewed other parts of this series, the links are in the description box. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.